Now that was just a short introduction into space law. And, and I think it's important I emphasize short because there is so much more we could have covered. I mean, you teach a whole course on space law, right? Right, right, we do. And, and uh, there's, there's a number of universities that, that do that and it, it takes, uh, you know, at least a week full time to, to cover it in a little bit of depth, but, but it's, it's absolutely a developing area. As, as our discussions have demonstrated, there are a lot of unknowns and yeah. there's efforts needed to, to create greater clarity. And, and, I, and I think this is an important thing a lot of people always think about, well, you know, where is space headed? Where is the work happening? And I always cite the other stuff. You know, I think everyone says, oh, you know, everyone always focuses on the rockets. Right. It is so much more than the rockets, as I right. think, you know, the law aspect shows, because as you were talking about at the end, what you can and can't do legally will also affect what you can and cannot do technically and vice versa. Right, right. I mean, everybody wants a level of certainty. Yeah. Um, if, if you're going to uh, launch rockets, launch satellites, you want other people who are acting in the space domain, other industry actors, to, to act responsibly because your satellite's going to be up there with other people's satellites. So, so, you know, on the one hand, you might not like regulation when it's applied to you, but you absolutely <laughs> want regulation applied to others. I like that. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Just as uh, you know, the speed limit's annoying to me, but I'm glad other people are driving the speed limit, I guess. Yeah. Yes. So do you foresee any big problems coming up with the somewhat lack of clarity in some of these issues that you've talked about? I, I am absolutely concerned about the possibility of conflict involving outer space. Uh, I'm concerned about the fact that over the past decade there have been a number of high-ranking officials and military generals saying that space is a wild west and there are no rules that apply, which is absolutely not the case. Um, and part of the reason to be particularly concerned about it in the space domain is because the implications could be very long term. Yeah. When you create debris yeah. in the space domain, it can last for centuries, yeah. millennia, etc. And, and, I, and I think that's the thing, and, and we talk a bit about this in some of the later in the space, you know, the times the satellites get off. It's as we've seen with the space debris, as we were talking about with the clouds of stuff orbiting around, it's not there for 10 seconds and then goes away. It risks and then it limits what you can do and so on and so on and so on. So do you, when you say space conflict though, is it, it's not Star Wars, right? I, I think this is the thing, everyone imagines lasers and Star Wars, it's a lot more subtle than that? Well, it, 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 it could be a lot more subtle and in all likelihood it, it will be and already is now so so you know there are uses of the electromagnetic spectrum interference in in uh, uses of the electromagnetic spectrum there's cyber interference there's there's optical interference yep. all of those things have already happened and are happening now there are more overt things like anti-satellite missiles yep. that 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 will destroy satellites but I think it's also quite conceivable that as more and more states come in close contact, for example, on the moon, yes. that there will be conflict. Yeah. Um, and, and that conflict, um, notwithstanding different, different laws of physics, could still look quite conventional in a sense. Yeah, okay. Um, there, there are sci-fi series that, that <laughs> seek to, to, to um, give a version of that and what it might look like, but it is conceivable that there would be use of conventional arms on the moon, for example. And you, so you don't think that's actually that dramatic of a thought? No, I don't think so. I, I think it's a, a very sorry reality that wherever humanity goes, conflict will follow. And do you think there's any way then of slowing, slowing down is not the right word, but limiting impact or chaos or damage or conflict, whatever it may be? Um, so getting clarity about the laws that apply and the rules that apply okay. uh, and, and not just to conflict, but um, I talked before about normalization yeah. of the space domain. Yeah, yeah. It said that, that good fences make good neighbors. Yeah, okay. uh, and, and if you know what the rules are, then the likelihood of conflict arising is, is lessened. So if, if okay. for example, you know, there are rights of way established for space in space yeah, yeah, traffic yeah. management, 
management, and then there's less likely to be conflict. Okay. Because hopefully everyone will recognise those rights of way, and and it just won't get to the point of conflict. So, so in fact, some of these ideas are actually kind of. I won't say simple because clearly what we just explored is not simple, but straightforward in terms of things that can be solved that actually do quite a big difference in terms of the clarity or issues that we may or may not have. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, having clarity is, is, and certainty is, is um, simple as a concept, but achieving it is difficult in, in application and implementation. And do you genuinely think there's the will or desire for most people, countries, companies, whatever the case may be, to do the right thing? Like, is it mostly goodwill? Is it mostly ambivalent will, bad will? I know it's a loaded topic, but <laughs> like, I mean, do, do you see that people still mostly want to do the right thing and are trying to do the right thing, even if they may not always do it? Well, I, I think perhaps more so than other domains, the space domain is, is quite inspirational and aspirational. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and there are a lot of uh, good actors out there. But the fact is that resources are limited one good example is earth orbits we might have thought yeah. in the past that earth orbits are relatively unlimited no. um, and yet you know as more and more companies put in applications file applications to to put, put up constel yeah, yeah, constellations yeah, yeah. of tens of thousands hundreds of thousands that looks more like a a land grab in a sense yeah it does and um, it's kind of that sustainable argument you're making we've used to view it as it was always sustainable but yeah. it just actually may not be the case anymore. Right, right. And, and uh, you, you know, there's that temptation even among good actors, if you can secure the things that you need to be a commercial success in the absence of a legal framework, yeah. then why not do that? Mm. Uh, and, and so I'm not 100% confident that, that there are good actors out there and that, that you know, the good actors will just do the right thing without a legal framework. I think there needs to be some clarity. And, and, and something you said early on, and I think it's important when you're talking about this, is, you know, the bigger spacefaring nations learn from their mistakes, they try, they then set the rules for the others. And it seems to be a lot of repeating of this that, yeah, OK, we get some rules or some clarity, but then that creates actually even more division in some ways. You know, a lot of people talk about yeah. democratization of space, mm. which is kind of true, but in another way, it's also kind of not true yes. because the democratization in some ways is really a haves, which is just more diversified into have nots, which is becoming in some ways a bigger discrepancy in some of this technology. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's not just in the space domain, in, in, in other industries yeah. and other domains, of course, the, the early rises in terms of technology, the early adopters of technology set the rules and, and therefore create barriers to entry for others. And, and that often in the case of space is purely a, an economic one in some cases to have the technology which directly relates to the economic wealth of a country, which then furthers disparities. And, you know, when you're talking about some of the other applications of space of Earth observations, which are fairly straightforward, but yeah. very impactful for water management or bushfire management, or whatever the case may be. And so if the countries who are more affected by drought and things like mm. that, then don't have the technology to better management water. And right. it seems like there's some vicious cycles that you can really get into. Yeah, and, 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 and Earth observation is a very good um, example in respect of that. And there, there are uh, general assembly resolution, the remote sensing principles specifically about that, where high technology uh, states have had the means to do Earth observation over other countries to recognise where those other countries might have resources yeah. and then not share that information with the country concerned. Yeah. So they go to that country and say, we just want to look over there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not realising, they don't realise what they have, but the other countries have invested in that. And again, that's a, a repeated example of some of the things we've seen historically. So it's, it's weird in some ways space seems so far advanced, yet mm. some of the basic issues we've had for decades yeah. of centuries repeat themselves in some way. They, they do, they do. Uh, is there anything you're optimistic in the sector about? Um, look, I, I think there are a lot of good actors in, in the sector. I think that um, the fact that we already have a, a very complex international law and national law framework 
is 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 great. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like the cyber domain, for example, okay. where yeah, there yeah, there yeah. there is uh, not much law applicable. Mm -hmm. um, so we just need clarity about how a lot of the law applies in the space domain. So I feel optimistic about that, and I feel optimistic about the people um, and the technology that 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 they develop. And it, it is exciting. It is inspirational. And so if there's one message, I guess, that we could take from this whole part is clarity. We yes. need a bit more clarity for it and how impactful it is on all these other issues when we're dealing with space. Absolutely, yes, clarity. Mm -hmm.